Hey, it's Ramsey Dewey over here in Shanghai, China. Let's talk about size and strength again. Yeah, I know, again. A recent video I made revisiting the subject of size and strength and how much it matters sparked once again by that friendly sparring match between Conor McGregor and Game of Thrones star, the mountain Thor Bjornsson. Half Thor Bjornsson sparked the question, what would happen if it was a real fight? And I suggested that perhaps the giant, giant strongman would squish the much, much smaller professional fighter. And a lot of people hated that answer. And they said, but, but, but when I was in sixth grade, I beat up a fat kid. And so that means that McGregor would win. Okay, I, I don't care how many fat kids you beat up in grade school. It's not the same thing. But the reason I'm bringing this up again, as I was about to entertain another question this guy was asking me, uh, how would Gordon Ryan do in an EBI rules grappling match against the mountain? I was thinking, oh man, that's, that's such a weird question. I mean, in my heart, I would like to see jujitsu prevail. I would like to see Gordon Ryan go for a footlock or something like that. But there is such a massive size and strength difference that I don't know. And there's a serious possibility that even under those rules, Gordon Ryan is still getting squished. I had a student who was like 400 20, 430 pounds, something like that. And I remember he got on top of me in my guard and I had to tap out from just the weight when he leaned forward. Size and strength make a big difference, man. So the reason I'm bringing this up today, recently, Zach Talander put out a video. If you don't follow Zach, go check him out. He is an Olympic weightlifting coach. Dude is awesome. I love his channel. I've been watching it for a long time. He's got some some great videos on there about how to get strong, how to improve your lifts, how to improve your technique. Great stuff. And he put out a video where he is doing a casual grappling match with Cody Steele. If you don't know who that is, he's a high-ranking, highly decorated jiu-jitsu black belt who's experienced a lot of success in the world of jiu-jitsu. And he is, in his own right, a strong guy. But Zach is notably bigger and notably stronger than Cody. Now, it's not a massive, massive size difference like, say, the Mountain versus Conor McGregor would be. Once again, that's like a size difference, a size and strength difference equivalent to, say, me versus my eight-year-old daughter. Again, the size and strength difference between Zach and Cody, it's not nearly that extreme, but it is there and it is important. And I watched this video. They grapple for about 10 minutes or so. And I love the fact that they started on their feet and they engage in a lot of wrestling. And it's cool. It's, it's fun to watch. Zach moves really, really well, especially considering that he is a one-stripe white belt in jiu-jitsu going up against a world-class competitor black belt. And we learned something watching this. We learned something. We are so used to seeing these videos, these David versus Goliath videos on the internet where David wins, where the little guy wins. And some of these are really fun and really educational. And a lot of them are put out there to push an agenda, to push the small man agenda and make wimps feel good about themselves and give themselves a nice little pat on the back. It's okay that you're a small little wimp who doesn't lift and never will because you're too lazy to pick up weights and do consistent work. Because this other small guy who's a much, much better athlete than you'll ever be with that attitude beat a much bigger guy. But that's not what we saw. We saw Zach handle himself pretty well. Now, he doesn't crush Cody, he doesn't submit Cody, but he does pretty well. He doesn't get caught with a submission, he doesn't get stuck on the bottom. At one point, Cody did manage to get back mount, and Zach managed to get out of there pretty handily. Zach at one point threatened Cody with a triangle choke, but of course, being the excellent grappler that he is, Cody managed to get out of that, get a nice reversal on the situation, but... Generally, when we see a 
one striped white belt up against a black belt. It's pretty one-sided. It's that black belt teaching the this white belt a lesson, and that's not what we saw. We saw a really strong, really athletic guy holding his own against a smaller but more experienced jujitsu guy. Size and strength really do matter a lot. They matter a lot. I know it's not a popular message because the popular message of martial arts, the reason so many of us signed up for martial arts classes, is this promise that martial arts are this this key, this secret ingredient, this magic pill that will allow the smaller guy to beat the bigger, stronger guy with technique. And that's all it's going to take. Now, I don't want to spin this story to make anybody leave thinking, oh yeah, Zach kicked Cody's butt. No, nothing like that. After 10 minutes of grappling, you know, Zach puts this up on, on his website, on, on, on his YouTube channel. And shows that after grappling for 10 minutes with this masterful jujitsu expert, Zach goes over and throws up in the trash. Because <laughs> he's just feeling like, oh man, I put it all out there. Meanwhile, Cody's still feeling pretty, pretty good, pretty fresh. He looks like he could keep going for hours. But as far as what actually happened on the mat, yeah, he held his own pretty well. He showed size and strength really do matter that much in a fight. I don't know, why do we reject this message so much? Why do we reject this message so much? I was teaching a class the other day and I had a bunch of questions about how to defend a guillotine choke. And the first thing you need to do to defend a guillotine choke is fix your posture, straighten out your spine. That means your head, your neck, your spine, your tailbone need to be in a straight line because if they're bent over like this, you're dead. And it takes a certain level of strength to fix your posture when the other guy's bending you in half. Essentially, you have to do a deadlift. You have to put your spine in the same position as a deadlift. And that takes some physical strength. And yes, there are other body mechanics at play, putting your, your body in certain positions to facilitate that, to make it easier, but it does take a certain level of physical strength. It's not an inordinate one. You don't need to be able to deadlift an inordinate amount of weight in order to straighten out your spine. Well, depending on who has your neck, really. But let's say you're going up against a guy your same size or close to it, and He's got that front headlock, he's turning that into a guillotine choke, he's in his closed guard. You can stack him and then use that deadlift strength to straighten out your posture, straighten out the head, neck, spine, and tailbone, and start to pry that arm off and do some other little magic tricks to make that work. But again, it does take a certain level of strength. So I'm teaching this technique, and a couple of the weaker guys in the class are having trouble with it. Because they don't have the physical strength. They've never been under a barbell before. They've never picked up a weight. And they're having a hard time with it. Because they're weak. They're physically weak. And they want an easy solution that doesn't require physical strength. They want an easy solution to straighten out their posture, to straighten out their body under pressure that doesn't require strength. And that doesn't work. It doesn't work. Technique is not a magic trick. That just magically allows the weaker guy to beat the stronger guy. Technique, as I often say, if I've said in many of these videos, is using your strength, your athleticism, efficiently. It's an efficient use of strength and power, not a lack thereof. Now, we could look at this match between Cody and Zach and see, oh, well, the strong guy, you know, he, he held his own pretty well. Okay. Yeah. But we can also look at this through the lens 
of the Jiu-Jitsu Black Belt. The Jiu-Jitsu Black Belt didn't get squashed and dominated by the big strong guy. He didn't submit him, he didn't embarrass him, he didn't squash him, but his technique allowed him to also hold his own against the big strong guy and not get crushed. Now both of those messages are super important. Size and strength matter. Technique also matters. And one thing we can learn from this video, these two guys are friends. They work together. Zack helps Cody in his goals to get stronger. Cody helps Zack in his goals to become a more technical grappler. Brilliant fusion of ideas right there. So we have a strong guy learning to be more technical and a technical, a technical guy learning to be more strong. What a beautiful message that we get from that video. I love it. I love it. So if you haven't seen it, go watch that. Zack Talander, his match with Cody. There's a lot to be learned there. So again, if you are, I'm not going to say a wimp, if you're a mental wimp. And by that, I don't, I don't mean a stupid person. I mean the type of person who comes up with excuses to not become strong when you can. Or a mental wimp isn't a person who comes up with excuses to not become technical when you can. Because you can put in the work. You should put in the work either way. Both ways. It's not a one or the other. You can be strong and you can be technical. That's the moral of the story that I got from that video right there. And it's beautiful. Go watch it. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Go subscribe to Zach's channel too. Man, I cannot believe that my channel has more subscribers than his. It's a quality channel, so if you like lifting, if you like Olympic lifts, if you like being strong and all that entails, go check that out. Go subscribe. Tell him Ramsey sent you. He doesn't know who I am. That'll probably confuse him more than anything. Anyway, thank you for watching. Get out there and train.